Welcome to the Small Business Success Tips Podcast with me, your host, Neil McDonald. In this podcast, we strive to provide key information and tips that will help small businesses like yours learn how to more effectively present your services to possible federal sector buyers. In each episode, a small business champion joins us to share their knowledge and experience with you. While they will have different titles, their common goal is to help the federal government benefit from what small businesses offer. These guests donate their time because they realize not everyone has the budget or time to meet them in person, and we thank them for that. Our guest today is Emily Harmon, Director of the Department of Navy's Office of Small Business Programs. She is the number one champion of small businesses in the Department of Navy, responsible for the success of the Department's small business programs and management of the small business professionals throughout the Navy. Emily has responsibility for the Navy small business programs and has been supporting small businesses in the Navy for years. I was particularly encouraged as a small business owner by her words to other small business professionals throughout the federal government back in April 2018 at the DOD Small Business Training Week. She knows the value small businesses can provide to the Navy and Marine Corps in support of the mission priorities. And she works tirelessly in support of the success of small businesses. What I think I like best about Emily's experience is that it blends what she learned as a contracting officer or buyer with what she learned about the challenges all of us small businesses face. Welcome, Emily, and thank you for joining us today. For a small business listening, you are the Navy and its 10 buying commands. Perhaps you can start off by telling us why the Navy and Marine Corps leadership value small businesses. Thank you for having me here today. So we value small businesses because our technological advantage depends on a healthy and secure national security, innovation, or industrial base. And that has to include both large companies as well as smalls and non-traditional defense partners. And small businesses are critical because they bring innovation, agility, sometimes a lower cost structure. So that's one of the reasons why we feel it's important to track them down and to help create opportunities for them to do business with us. Perfect, perfect. Well, in, in this podcast, we're going to be asking a lot of questions designed to really provide um, tactical tips to you, the listeners, um, from the Department of Navy. And it's funny, one thing that I've heard over and over again, that if you don't know the language, you don't know the agency. And myself, I came prepared to this podcast, and I was saying Navy, Navy. And Emily helped me understand there's the Navy, and then there's the Department of Navy. And the Department of Navy includes Navy and Marine Corps. Um, and that's what we're hoping you pay attention to as you listen to this podcast and we move forward. So um, maybe I can start with that a little bit for the Department of Navy. Um, how does the Navy and Marine Corps work um, together or not together from when it comes to acquisition, uh, especially in the small business side? Okay, well, within the Department of the Navy, the Secretary of the Navy oversees the Navy and the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps is headed by the Commandant of the Marine Corps and the Navy's headed by the Chief of Naval Operations. But on the Secretariat staff, we have the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. So all of the acquisition for the Navy and Marine Corps comes under him, Secretary Gertz. And so he, uh -huh. he oversees the, the 10 buying commands, and two of our 10 buying commands support our, our Marine Corps. One is the Marine Corps Systems Command, and one is Marine Corps Installation and Logistics. So they do most of the buys for the Marine Corps. However, the Naval Air Systems Command does the buying for Marine Corps aircraft. So that's why it's really important to, you know, really you know, focus on, on a customer. If you want to focus on the Department of the Navy, understand the Navy and the Marine Corps. It takes a little bit of uh, doing your homework to figure it out. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And, and you mentioned two of the 10 buying commands. Um, when we look at uh, trying to understand or do our homework in the Navy, any advice for us uh, small businesses as we look at the buying commands and maybe, you know, as a small business, would I fit into all 10 of them or, or are there um, buying commands that might be a more natural fit for me to begin with? Because even 10, even just focusing on the Navy, there's 10, 10. buying commands and now i got to look at that. Any suggestions on where I might start looking just as a general st small business? Well, our website um, contains links to each of the 10 buying commands, and it ha the links to their websites, and we also have some general information on each of the 10 buying commands on our website. So you can kind of break it down into the Naval Air Systems Command, buys stuff for uh, airplanes, 
and you know supports the airplanes. Naval Sea Systems Command is more ships. Um, strategic Systems uh, Program Office is more uh, ballistic defense. Um, so you kind of, as you do your research and understand what each of the commands buy, that's one way to start or understand their missions. Um, that's one way to start. The next thing is to go look at their long range acquisition forecast. There's a link on our website to each of these commands long range acquisition forecast, which talks, which ha lists what they plan to buy in the next three fiscal years. And some commands update it quarterly, some commands update theirs twice a year. But taking a look at that list of what their upcoming um, contracts, contracting actions are going to be will help you to determine, you know, does this command buy what I sell? And then go and talk to the small business professional. Each of the commands has small business professionals. Are there, um, every agency or uh, department is different with the small business professionals. Do you guys have a lot? Are there... Like how many do you get out there, we have, and, and yeah. do they fall under each buying command? We have 76 total. Um, some of them are in my office, but there are small business professionals at each of these buying commands, okay. and each of the buying commands has an associate director, and um, there's a link to how to get to that associate director, the head of small business for that command, from our website. And that's their responsibility is to talk with you about um, – you know, how to best position your company and help you figure out if your company is positioned to do business with us. And they know about the other buying commands. So, for example, if you go to NavAir, here's just a quick example. When I was the head of small business at NavAir, I would have a company come and ask, um, you know, we want to sell runway lights or maybe paved runways. Well, that's the Naval Facilities Engineering Command. It doesn't, it's not intuitively um, obvious because yeah, yeah. it's aviation related. But the Naval Facilities Engineering Command does the buying for the facilities. So um, one other tip that I would have about figuring out which command you want to support is to look at the command's small business strategies. They, we haven't announced it yet because they're not all posted. But within the next month, each one of these 10 buying commands will have a strategy posted on their website about what they're going to be doing to increase in opportunities for small businesses to do business with them. Now, they've written them for the past two years, and we haven't made them public. This year, we're making them public because we want to be transparent, and we want to hold ourselves accountable to what we say we're going to be doing. So um, as soon as we get all 10 of them, some of these commands already have them posted, but as soon as we get all 10 of them, we will post a link from our website, and I uh, highly recommend you read that. That's another way of getting to know the command that you want to perhaps do business with. No, I like that, making it public. I, uh, um, I tell my wife the things I want to do better to be a better husband. <laughs> when yes. I keep it to myself, I can get away with not, <laughs> I met all my goals. Right. <laughs> uh, no, I like that. I'm going to definitely check that out. And, and we'll put links um, in this podcast, we'll put links. And so some of the stuff that Emily's mentioning, um, you can take a look at our rewrite of this as well and, and find the links there. So you, um, you mentioned a couple of things I want to kind of pull this thread on. Um, with the small business professionals at these commands. Um, when we reach out to small business specialists throughout the entire federal government, we small businesses get a different experience depending on who we call. Um, and, and I think I'm just pulling a thread on something you, you really did say, but I want to check this, is that um, we're advising the small businesses who are listening that if they want to do work with NAVAIR, for example, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. to, to reach out to that small business professionalist or that office and... Um, and get their help saying, look, I think I'd fit here. Can we, can we talk? Can we have a meeting? Right. I, I, I think that that's what they should do. But what they shouldn't do is just um, call and say, hey, I'm a hub zone small business and I want to do business with you guys because you're having trouble meeting your hub zone goals. you got to do some of your homework first, which means understanding what the command does as best you can by looking at their website, maybe going to the local procurement technical assistance center, and um, fig, you know, having the Procurement Technical Assistance Center help you. Um, but you know, do your homework. Like I had somebody at, um, come visit me once at NavAir and they came into the office and met with me and they said, do you still do testing on this base? Well, that's a big part of what we do at NavAir is test naval weapon systems. So yeah. the fact that that person asked me that right away in my head, I'm thinking this person hasn't done their homework and they're wasting my time. So 
Maybe it wasn't a complete waste of time, but I mean, no, it's but a they first impression. More value. They, they could have gotten more value. You know, your your first impression matters, and if your first impression is that you haven't done your homework or that you're just trying to market your company to get a handout because you're a hub zone or a service disabled veteran or a woman owned small business, you, you've got to really be able to demonstrate how you contribute to the mission. So if you have somewhat of an idea of that and then you go in and talk to the small business professional, they can help you refine that and answer questions, but at least show that you've looked at the website and tried to do some work homework on your own. No, that makes a lot of sense too, because it's, it, you mentioned um, the P tax and that's a big part of what we tell people all the time is start with the SBDCs, go to your P tax, then go to your small business yes. professionals. And it's not because you can't go to the small business professionals. It's because they have so much more they could offer. But if you make them answer a question as simple as, <clears throat> do I need a capability statement or something? Yeah, of course you do. Right. Register in SAM. You know? right. Don't make me tell you the stuff you can find right. somewhere else. Let me get you introduced to somebody or whatever. Um, okay, so that's uh, the small business professionals. And I think you've transitioned us into um, another part that I really like to share is uh, your suggestions on best practice or lessons learned or um, just ways small businesses can improve. Um, so what are some thoughts you have on, uh, I guess I'd like to start on what, what we're doing right out there that you'd like to see more of, mm -hmm. you know, because you probably have a couple of favorite right. experiences. So I think some best practices are networking and getting to know the customer. And the way you do that is, you know, f make sure you know who your competitors are. What other small businesses are in the area that are trying to do the same work that you are? How are they successful? Could you team with them? Um, you know, you guys are all in it together. So networking, know your customer's pain points. You know, there's different ways to get that. Look at articles on the paper, look at their Facebook site, look at um, congressional testimony, understand what the challenges are. You know, if you're, I, I know I keep going back to NavAir, but if you're looking at NavAir, you know that Aviation readiness is one of the challenges at NavAir, keeping all our planes up in the air ready to ready to ready yeah. to be able to fly. Same with ships. So, you know, understand what the pain points are and maybe where your company could help, how your company could support that. So I think um, uh, companies that do that are, are doing a good job and approach the customer with how you can help solve their problems. And so if you do your homework, go in and talk to the small business professional first. You know, try your approach on them. Say this, you know, I want to go meet with the technical customer in this area of responsibility, and this is what I want to say to them, and this is how I want to approach them. And the small business professional works at that command, should be able to help you with understanding the culture of that command, how to best approach that um, technical person, and help you set up that appointment with the technical person. Within the Department of the Navy, all of our deputy program managers um, – at our big systems commands like Naval Air Systems Command, Naval Sea Systems Command, um, Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command, and Marine Corps Systems Command, all of the de pro deputy program managers for our big programs like F-18, H-60, um, littoral combat ship, they have, an, have a duty to be a small business advocate for their program. So they're not a small business professional like I am. It's not their day job, but they are supposed to be advocates for their program. And we have developed training on what it means to be a small business advocate. And they've all had the training and they know that they're supposed to, you know, answer calls from small businesses, be looking for opportunities for small businesses to do business on their programs and support their programs. But so a, a good small business would first, before approaching a deputy program manager, go to the small business professional at that command, make sure they're ready to go see the deputy program manager, and then go in, go in and see them. Go talk to them. No, that's great. I hadn't even, I didn't know that, obviously. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even thought of it, though. The, um, the, when you talk about deputy program managers, um, can you just give me an example of uh, what's a program are you talking about? Like, okay. Um, you were talking about the airplanes or? Right. Look, so for um, pro. PMA 299, I used to support that program office. That okay. program office is the program office that buys the um, H-60 helicopters. Okay. And, um, and so they have a program manager that's typically a captain in the Navy. Um, and then there's a deputy program manager that's usually a GS-15. And, and they're in charge of that whole program office. And so it's those deputy program managers. So there might be one. Um, I know there's one at Spay War for C4I, you know. 
um, there's command control. There's one at Marine Corps for um, land systems. There's different program offices. So you can find that out on, on their websites. That's what I was going to ask. Is there a place I can go, not that we have to rattle it from memory here, but a place we can go research? Right. And you might have to send me a link, but uh, where we could go begin to learn about programs. Because I hadn't even thought about that, but yeah. that's really good for the more mature small businesses that right. we have who can go in and demonstrate solid past performance. Right. I can help you with that, um, and um, I'm sure if you just, like, on, I know on the NAFC website, too, I know that they list the deputy program managers, not by name, but they list the program office and a phone number. Okay. So you can get to them. We, I'll share that with you. We can put it on your podcast. So before we move too much further, I need to ask you a really important question, because I've been calling it Spay War for a while. I just heard you call it Spay War, and then I heard somebody else a couple of days ago call it Spa War. I'm like, oh, have I been saying it wrong? Oh, no, no, it's the, uh... Spay War because I remember because on my very first day on the job, I had to introduce um, the commander of Spay War at a conference, and I said Spa War. So I know it's Spay War. That's funny. <laughs> he yeah. corrected me. Offline, I'll tell you where I heard it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because you'll like that. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what he told me. No, but that's we what I've been saying. What's it, mm-hmm. what's it stand for? Space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, no one says right. it's spas. We're going to spas. Mm-hmm. It's space. But, um, I digress. Uh, So, okay, so those are, you were talking about a couple of things like networking, um, know their pain points, and and bring a solution. Bring a solution is one of my favorite things to anything. I Mm -hmm. tell that to my kids. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'll solve anything as long as you got the idea. Don't make me do the work for you. Right. Um, But what about, um, you know, as you look across your experience with small businesses and those of us out there that are coming to the Navy, um, what's one thing or two uh, that you wish we would stop, (laughs) you know, or change or whatever, like, um, you know, if you if you could think in your world of uh, small business professionals, what are we doing wrong? Okay, um, I would say, don't approach me and tell me that you can help us meet our goals. Uh, goals. Um, okay. I am I am I do care if the Department of Navy meets its small business goals. I care if the federal government meets its small business goals. But what I care about more is if we're accomplishing the mission, because we could be awarding tons of contracts to small businesses and meeting our goals. And those small businesses could be failing. And we're measuring the wrong thing. Yeah. We're measuring yeah. that, did we meet a goal? Did we spend enough money with small businesses? We might have, but then the, 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 the programs are failing because the smalls aren't doing their job. So when you approach us, talk to us about the solution that you can offer, or how you can help us accomplish our mission. And then later tell me if you're a woman owned or a hub zone or something like that because that gets me thinking about different ways that I could get to you differently because there's different contracting authorities but really you got to the, the the program managers that you're going to go see the deputy program managers if you get to the point where you go see them mm-hmm. what do they care about delivering their product on time within cost you know cost schedule and performance and meeting a small business goal is not their number one priority. They got to deliver something that's got to work to the warfighter. So approaching us um, with how you can help us solve a problem. So th- that's a best practice, and it's also something that I wish so, uh, small businesses would do more. Um, and then if you're running into problems, let us know. I've had some issues where small businesses were running into challenges getting paid, mm-hmm. and. Um, and didn't bring it up to our attention as soon as they probably should have. Or if you, even if you're having problems performing on the contract, there's things that we can, there's actions that we can take. So make sure the contracting officer knows, make sure the small business professional knows, you know, we're, we're, we don't want to see you fail. We want to see you succeed. And we don't want to see you go months without being paid. We can, we can figure out a solution to that. Yeah, I actually heard somebody talking to me the other day, last week, about how they sometimes go months. I'm like, what are you doing? Ugh. Talk to me. Because uh, it's bad enough any large didn't get paid, but right. smalls, it's it's a, a really completely, um, no one wants smalls not to get paid. No. So if that's happening more than once, you're being abused. Right. If it happens once, it's an, you know it's just a right. mis- it's challenge or something. Sometimes it's just financial systems not talking to each other, you know. Yeah. So sometimes it does take someone at my level to get involved to fix it. Um, and what we will fix it because that's not right. One tip I, I just share with them, what Emily just was talking about a minute ago, though, her other tip about don't come talk to me about your woman-owned business or a hub zone, um, my capability statement, because I am a small business owner, it screams everything I do on there. I'm trying to be around communication and outreach. And up on the very top, though, it has veteran-owned and hub zone certification, uh, the logos or whatever. And every single time I show my 
capability statements to somebody, they see the work I do and they go, oh, I see your vet in a hub zone. Right. It, which is great. So it, it says it without me ever saying it. Right. And um, and it does exactly what small businesses are hoping. Hey, you know, we could we mm-hmm. could perhaps get in there. So that's good. Another tip would be to, to start out as a subcontractor. A lot of times the smalls mm-hmm. want to be the prime right away. Um, but if you want one way, a good way of getting to know your customer is to start out as a subcontractor to another small business or to a larger business. Um, that helps you get your foot in the door, helps you get known, helps you do a good job, helps you get some past performance. Um, so you don't have to be the prime all the time. Uh, I want to switch gears a little bit as we're like um, 20 minutes into the 30-minute um, podcast. But uh, I want to talk about vehicles for a second and, and just answer where it feels comfortable um, compared to memory. But um, w- there's two questions I want to ask you. One is about the trend as you look at the um, department going forward. I almost said Navy going forward, but the department going mm-hmm. forward, um, the trend of what vehicles are using. And then the other is, um, does the department have new vehicles? In, and I'm relating this to like right now, I'm helping people who on the State Department, there's a new IDIQ. In SEC, there's a new IDIQ. In this other place, there's a new IDIQ. But I was talking to the Coast Guard, and they were like, no, no, we're doing almost nothing new, if at all, because we have a mandate to go to the ones that exist. Mm-hmm. What's it like here in the Department of Navy? Well, um, it's there's not just one set answer. You know, we don't have uh, somebody at the top of the Department of Navy telling each of these 10 buying commands, you must use this contract vehicle. There's a bunch of different contract vehicles out there, um, and the, those are tools in the contracting officer's toolbox. They're supposed to um, be efficient, you know, so we don't, we only have so many contracting officers and we don't want, you know, every customer awarding their own contract. We try to use, you know, our resources to the best extent that we have possible. So we try to use multiple award contracts. The Department of the Navy has Seaport E and we're getting ready um, to award the follow-on to that Seaport E. So the proposals are already in. Um, I don't know exactly when it's going to be awarded, but I think they call it Seaport Next Gen. Hmm. And that is a rather large multiple award IDIQ contract, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contract for lots of different services, program management services, things like that. So if you are doing business with the Navy and you're selling services, you might want to look at uh, just Google Seaport E, look at that Seaport E portal, figure out how we do things. That when, when the next Seaport contract is awarded, within a year or so after that, there will probably be a rolling admissions where more small businesses can get on. But if you're not on it now as a prime, you could um, pay attention, figure out when the awards are made, and try to team with somebody who's already on that contract. That's, a, that's the biggest one that the, that the Navy uses. A lot of our different buying commands use that c e contract. But, um, for example, the Naval Air Systems Command just awarded their own multiple award contract for program management services. So it's really a matter of when you go and talk to the small business professional at these commands, ask the question, how do you buy the types of supplies and services that my company sells? And then they can tell you. And, and the PTAX can help with that, too, because they can do a search on, you know, the product service code or the NAICS code for what you're selling. And then they can look at d- the different commands and see how they're buying it. Are they using the GSA Oasis? Are they using GSA schedules? Are mm-hmm. they using c e What's the trend been in the past as to how they're buying the kinds of things that you sell? And that helps you figure out how to position yourself. Do you know if um, the PTAX are using... Like FPDS? I think they use or? FPDS, and they have this thing called bid match. I heard um, about that. Yeah. And then, um, you know, anybody can use FPDS NG and do the easy search. There's yeah. an easy yep. search yep. function on there. I don't know how easy it is, so it's, what, it's helpful to go to the PTAX and they I can use help. it a lot. It's, okay. Yeah. It's, I mean, and again, this goes back to those things. PTAX, to me, are also like small business professionals in the sense that the more you can do on your own, before you get to them, right. the more they can help you move to the next level. Right. Um, but if you come to them too early, then they're just going to help you move to a place you're, where you could have been. Um, I always tell people that procurement is in their name. That's that's <laughs> one of their big goals right. to help you procure a contract. So um, going there prepared is the same as going to um, anybody in the Department of Navy. Mm-hmm. So um, we're getting we're getting kind of close towards the end, and you know, as I look at um, some of the activity you're doing to to outreach into small businesses, et cetera. Um, 
I might want to throw that your way because I know that you wanted to highlight some of the areas people could go and do homework and learn more about the Department of Navy. Mm-hmm. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about like the social media worlds? And- right. So our website is www.smallbusiness.navy.mil. Or you could just Google Navy Small Business or Department of Navy Small Business, and our website should come up. We are working on and making some improvements to that website over the next few months. We also use the face. We use Facebook a lot, and we use Twitter. And so, if you just Google Department of Navy or Navy Office of Small Business Programs, you can find our our sites. But we'll put them on the link to this podcast as well. What we've been, we're going to start using. LinkedIn soon, probably by by January time frame. But one of the things that we're doing on Facebook, which I really like, is called um, we're using Facebook Live. And we've done three sessions, maybe four, um, on Facebook Live. One, I interviewed Secretary Gertz, who's the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research Development and Acquisition. I have We've interviewed our SBIR, Small Business Innovation Research Program Manager. We've done a session on how to be procurement ready. Some of the things that we covered here, but in more depth, how to be procurement ready to do business with the Navy and the Marine Corps. And we've also had a session on how did you, how do we in the Navy and the Marine Corps do our market research? How do we go and try to find, what do we do to find small businesses? So those videos are on our Facebook site and they are also posted on our YouTube channel, which we have, and we're gonna be populating our YouTube channel with even more videos. Some future Facebook Live topics that we have coming up are one on other transaction authority. I think that's going to be on November 7th. Keep an eye out for that. We have one coming up at the end of October on how to get your your product qualified, you know, through the naval supply systems. You know, how do you get your your product qualified and tested to be able to go on aircraft or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably have one on acquisition integrity because there's some acquisition integrity issues that can you know hurt your company if you're not being ethical and sometimes uh, they're they're not obvious and sometimes people don't get into that problem area on purpose it just kind of happens so we want to talk about that and then uh, one other one that we're talking about doing is uh, me with um, Elliot Branch who's the deputy assistant secretary of the Navy for acquisition and procurement talking to him about some of the main issues we hear from when we meet with small businesses, the feedback we get, where they feel like we could improve, and the things that we're, the actions we're taking to address some of those issues. So those are some of the next ones coming up. So hope people follow us on, on social media. Yeah, no, we'll definitely encourage that. I might actually start trying to link back from the HubZone Chambers um, website back to some of your portals. I, You know, I forgot to ask one question I do want to ask you about before we um, wrap up because it's not a short answer, but it's such a valuable one for small businesses. Um, cause I, I always talk about when you want to do any kind of business market research happens. The buyer is looking for businesses that can sell what they need and to fill their need. And the opposite is happening. Um, and I describe it as, uh, like Wayne Gretzky of hockey he says, don't skate to where the puck is, skate to where the puck's going to be. Mm-hmm. Where's the department of Navy going to be when they're doing their market research so what you know what are the top three tools or something what's your advice there? um they they i know they use sam and i and again i guess i would say that every command is different i know the naval air systems command because i used to work there has a portal on their website where you can register your interest in doing business with them and then um you can click the kind of small business that you are and put your website in there so they use that um we use sam we use um the internet, so making sure that your website's up to date, um, making sure that the points of contact on your website are up to date. We use sources sought as well, um, where we send out a an announcement saying, you know, through FedBizOps saying we have this challenge, we're looking for companies, we have this requirement, we're looking for companies that can do this work, can you, and we're looking for you to to respond. And then we have industry days. We have industry days that cover a particular procurement, but Sometimes we also have industry days like the Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division in Patuxent Rivers having one at the end of October where they're just discussing their organization and how to do business with them and some of their upcoming things. So it's not one particular procurement. It's um, 
more broad, and they'll have their technical people there. So those are all different ways to, to figure things out. And also ask your competimates, you know, who yeah, you're, you know, ask other companies, what do you know that's out there and that we could team on or something. I've never heard that term before, competimates. Is that, <laughs> is that a uh, uh, Emily Harmon coin phrase? I don't know. Phrase? I've never heard it. I've okay. been doing this stuff for 20 years or something, uh, certainly out there in the small business world, and I've never heard that. Uh-huh. Um, one other thing I was going to say is you guys have um, uh, a, a, you keep kind of a separate spreadsheet list of certain type of companies. I think I remember HubZone, like there's a HubZone list in do you have Cecilia Cecilia or something? I don't know if that name sounds familiar. I but don't know. Anyways, you guys have this list, and I was pushing people there, but um, that's a big part of what I'm trying. Oh, to- that is on um, the Naval Facilities Engineering Command website because they've been really looking to find more hub zones, and I shared that as a best practice. But that's, that's one of our ten buying okay. commands that's doing that. Yes, that's funny. Which one uh, was that? Naval Facilities Engineering Command. Okay. Uh, NAVFAC. NAVFAC. Okay, good, right. good, good. I remember so I'll, that. Mm-hmm. I want to put that link in there as well because that's a great little link. Mm-hmm. That It's one of those things that if they if the government can find you on that list, there's no need to go anywhere else. Right. If they can find three or five companies that do now, it. So. NAVFAC, um, close to 50% of what they put on contract goes to small businesses as prime. So that's pretty good. Wow. Um, I also want to just highlight that the Department of Defense has done really well this year in fiscal year 18 when it comes to spending money with small businesses. Preliminary data shows that we, the Department of Defense on a whole, is like $7 billion above where we were in fiscal year 17 with spending money with small businesses as primes. The Department of Navy, we're over $2 billion. So last year... In 17, we spent about 13.1, 13.2 okay. billion. Yeah. This year, the preliminary data is showing us at just under 15.5 billion. So, with small businesses as prime, so all this outreach and the homework that small businesses are doing and everything's paying off. Yeah, no, no, I think it's great. And, and on behalf of small businesses, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I know uh, I speak for our listeners when I say thank you for joining us today and sharing the knowledge and these tips. It's great. Um, you've already shared a lot about social media, but can you let our listeners know how they can reach you or this office in particular? Okay. They can uh, reach this office by calling 202-685-6485. And there's also a contact us uh, section at the very bottom of our website. We're going to move it to the top, but right now I think it's at the bottom of our website. So there's an email address that they can go to as well. Can I add one tip? Yep, please. So a lot of times companies say, Emily, I want to come in and give you my capability statement. Yeah. And what I would say is, first, I want you to watch the video on our Facebook or YouTube channel that talks about how to be procurement ready and how to do your homework. Because what it's going to tell you is that we have 10 buying commands, and those are the small business people you need to go to. You don't need to come in and meet with me. Now, I'm not saying I won't meet with companies, but... It, If you want me to be working on creating policies that help small businesses do business with the Department of the Navy, to be working on some visionary and strategic things, then that's where I and this office needs to be focused. It's the buying commands that have the requirement, that have the need, that have the money, that are putting things on contract. Those are the people you need to meet. You don't need to look me in the eye in order to win a, a contract with the Navy or a Marine Corps. So. No, that makes total sense. Uh, a lot of us get confused, small businesses. We hear Ozdabu or the equivalent right. at the department level, and we go in there, and it's like, well, no, that's not the person we want. It's right. a great person to meet and talk to, but the person we want is closer to the buyer. Yes, um, so. exactly. No, that and it's sense. really, a, you know, you came here today to the Navy Yard. It's not easy to find a parking spot or take the metro and get here. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. So I'd rather you spend that effort on doing your homework and figuring out which of the buying commands you should visit. No, that's perfect. Well, I really appreciate the information. Thank you. Okay, so as we wrap up this episode, I wanted to remind the listeners of a few things. Um, First, click the subscribe button to make sure you're notified when new episodes are released. This also helps those of us who work on the podcast know you're out there and listening. Second, if you find the podcast valuable and think others would, please share a note about it on LinkedIn or one of the other social media platforms. Finally, get access to a lot more free content that I know you'll find valuable by visiting our website, w. Membership is free, but the content is priceless. Um, I'm your host, Neil McDonald. I thank you for listening to this episode and hope you'll join us again for other episodes. Remember, you're just one contract away. Go make it happen.